Why don't we both get me always going to If you want to fight a small war, control an aircraft carrier or fly a spaceship, you can do it all from in here. Literally all of it. That's his fantasy. He wants his bedroom like this now. Can we do a rehearsal? No. Why? Because we've run out of money, we can't run out of money. <laughs> <laughs> we can get here. You want to see what it's for? Wilson! That's what it's for. <laughs> we have our ball back. Wilson! Yeah. We have our ball back. <laughs> So how do you explain the show to someone? He's never, never seen. Yeah, exactly. It's three middle-aged men in poor condition, falling over and catching fire, and occasionally a car goes by. There are by. cars in it. Yeah, occasionally oh, one goes yeah. by. It's very exciting. It's quite funny. We oh, like it. It really is three men with bad teeth and hangovers. I'm not um, good teeth, though. You can't sum it up. It's it's. It's a peripatetic tent-based car-themed adventure. Peripatetic's a long word. Peripatetic is a lot. Massive Roving, tent-based travel. No, but it's not like a drama. We can say, no. you know, I play the part of. There's a really slow driver, and this and, and that. I play the part of me. Yeah, he does. He does it very well. Very good impression of him. There's an audience. There's some bits that are inside the tent. Believe me, trust me, trust it's me. a great show. It is a great show, people love it. <laughs> like that. It's, it's be like that. Silly. So you get you climb in, you get there and you slide in the seat, you find the harness and you're sitting on a bit and a bit's over the door and you go, oh god, yeah, and you you got to find the immobilizer, you've got to press a button yes. to find the but Yes, eventually, remember, and you start sort of, oh, first gear, pulled away, and I thought, I get, oh no, I haven't put the steering wheel on. <laughs> How <laughs> do you, you set, set off set without it off. the wheel? <laughs> <laughs> Did you not notice? There's no, nothing... I put, you know, you put Where your, were your hands? Oh, well, look, you put, you, you put it in gear and let the clutch up and look, I was in a car park, and you look up and then you put your hands up and you think, something, and for a moment I thought, something's not right. <laughs> <laughs> only, <laughs> it was only you. <laughs> Only you. Only you could have your mind elsewhere to such an extent that you would go near the clutch. Well, what, your hand, um, you put your lift and well, you actually set off I without set the steering wheel. Keith Coe would have called it ten dollars of concentration. I'd used them all up on the seatbelt and the starting procedure. And, you know. Yeah. that much. Ask me what's going on in a minute. I know you are. Hey Richard, what's happening? I have no idea. There's some melons on cones. There's, they grow here like this naturally. The weird thing is, what's growing isn't the melon, it's the cone. That's that's where they come from. That's only a baby one. The, the one you see on the, the streets usually are much bigger. But um, come harvest time, take the melon off and you've got a brand new cone. Lovely to see them, fresh. going to be an accident. We just don't know what sort of accident. I hope it works, but even if it doesn't work, it's still interesting. You couldn't have predicted that. You no. could oh, none no. of it. I'm doing something wrong. Everything. No, I can't imagine you'll survive. 
<laughs> <That's just rubbish. laughs> that was a mistake. The whole bad ten. Yeah, I, mate, I would have lost it by now. You know, I'm pretty optimistic about my buggy, but I have my doubts. I've got to be honest. Well, my car has gone fairly spectacularly wrong. Oh, we're all alive, and we've established. Let's see now. Nothing. And it's all completely irrelevant, isn't it? Yep. Because <laughs> everyone's just going to say, oh, that was interesting. Yeah. Well, it ended in utter chaos, and I think people like it when things end in utter chaos. Yeah. <laughs> Some people travel the world effortlessly and look great yeah. doing it. Some people. We just burn. I've even got a heat rash, look. Oh, we always get some burn. Yeah. <laughs> I've got, have you got scrapes all over your legs? From yeah, the that, was, no, that was yesterday's injury. We are going to mention rum while we're here, because we found there's a great rum here called Cock Splash. No. Cock Spur Splash. Cock Spur Splash. We quite fancy a bit of Cock Splash rum. <laughs> Cock Splash Hammond? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The process of, of disagreeing about things, you know, there's another If you talk about business. the Wright Brothers, oh, I'm going to stab you. Oh, you spoiled it. You did. <laughs> I was going to talk about the Wright Brothers. You were Brothers. actually going to do it. I was going to You were going to sneak it in. You. Again, the Wright Brothers used to argue, and then the next day they'd take the opposing views and have the same argument. That's it. He'll take 20 minutes to... No, I didn't. How did you know that? Because you've told me exactly. a thousand times. Obviously, they went through that process and eventually got something very right. The world's first heavier-than-air powered, controllable aeroplane. We disagree and we're all wrong. <laughs> that is a fact. You can't escape that. You haven't quite got the story right. The point is that they had an assistant. I've forgotten his name. He used to make the little bits of them. And he became back. We're not going to tell you what just happened, obviously, because you have to watch the show, but... <laughs> it was unexpected. All of it was unexpected, and everyone will go, oh, you set that up. No. Well, now you see, we really didn't. But that is, half plus one, that is a wrap. Because hmm. everything's wrecked. <laughs> because we've broken everything. <laughs> it's ruined. Yeah. And the worst is, is, you couldn't have predicted that. You no. couldn't, none of it. Here are our tyre marks coming through the Namib Desert. And to get up this hill, I was flat out in second gear, got to the crest, overtook the camera tracking car, into third, shouting, excuse me, wow, the mighty V8. I anchored up here, stopped here, and look, one, six feet, six feet from going over the edge. Whoa. That's 300 miles to the centre of the earth. I don't feel self-conscious, I don't see any reason why I should. <laughs> it's really awkward. But it's one of those when it's great on TV, it'll be great when it's done, but the actual reality of it is I'm driving around Verona in a massive Hellcat with a picture of myself on the side of it. And it's not on TV right now, it's in the real world and people just think, what is he doing? It's embarrassing, not gonna lie, it is embarrassing. It'll be funny when it's on the telly though, so the day will be over soon and I won't be embarrassed anymore. <laughs>